more spirits as he went through uh, through death, like not through life, but um, through the spirit world. And I, I would imagine, as a spirit, you still learn things. Oh, so like a more and, modern spirit ran across him or something, and mm-hmm. he associated with what he did in, in life. And it was a more accurate description than what he was. And that's, given that's interesting. Okay. Okay. That's an interesting concept, and it is possible. Because, like um, a psychiatrist, a psychiatrist from the nineteen fifties could mm-hmm. also right now be called an LSD enthusiast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, like, we love pushing pills on people. Yeah. Yeah, like that is still that that is a. Uh, um, a term that would fit what they did. Mm -hmm. Mm. They were excited about those new drugs that were coming out and learning what they could do with them. And they were (laughs) used in those hospitals. And the side effects. Yeah. So, coming in, now, I I know your First Nations on the Canadian side. Have you ever talked to Upper Skagit Tribe? Yes. And do you know, has their, tri- has their tribal land always been where it is now? Or has it ever no. expanded to Northern State property? No, it never expanded. It retracted. Okay. They've lost okay. a lot of land, but not on Northern State. That property was never theirs. Okay. okay. But they have lost land on, I'd say, topographically both sides of it. And we are going to break. We'll be right back, folks.
Eric Cooper, S4 Radio, on Night Dreams Talk Radio Network, gets deep into the paranormal. Welcome back, S4 Night, folks. We're on the last hour of the show. Time flies when you're having fun. So tonight we're talking paranormal in the Cascades. We're talking everything under the sun uh, involving East Skagit, East Whatcom, East Snohomish counties, and some other topics. We have a special guest with us tonight, Jamie Justice, third generation up here in Upriver. Hey, Eric. Yeah. Go I ahead. got one more little uh, quip about Northern State. Okay. Kayla's grand- or great-grandfather was there. Really? His name was Henry Gibson. Um, we can actually pinpoint the year he went in, and it was uh, 1956. He is one okay. of the lost. Mm. His family lost track of him when he died. They have no idea. Huh. That's disturbing. Is there any way he was transferred? No, Thank he you. went in there for Alzheimer's, and he stayed there. They he they were notified that he died, but they never, they no one can remember. It was um, Kayla's grandparents who were notified, and so her great grandpa was born in the eighteen uh, eighties. Okay, and her grandparents were born in like the early nineteen hundreds, like nineteen oh six. So they were they were quite old by the time um, they had Kayla's mom. Right. And so by the time they were informed, they were already in their elder years. So no one really knows a whole history of it, but they do know that he stayed at Northern State and that he did die there. Uh, yeah, and I, and I hate hearing stories like that because it just shows the corruption from back then. And, you know, and Nikki's in the chat room and brings up an excellent point about the empath side, that maybe that they were an empath, and that's why they were locked up, because their abilities were confus- you know, confusing back in that time era. Absolutely. Yeah, and that would help a therapist with their job to be an empath. <laughs> and like if they were a wondered. therapist in life, too. Right, right. And she's wondering if that spirit, when they were alive, was an empath who repeatedly spoke of what was happening around them. And, you know, back then, it, you, you say you're an empath and you talk about, you know, things you shouldn't know, such as feelings of others and, and whatnot. No one really knew how to deal with it. And the paranormal issues around that person and a lot of empaths can be looked upon as counselors, et cetera, now because they help people. And that's an excellent point, Nikki. Uh, you know, and that's why I love, I love audience interaction when we, when we do our show. Because, uh, y- you know, there, there's no expert in this field. We always learn every case we do. And we always learn something new on the show. So, Northern State, yeah, very, uh, very active location. Now, getting to Devil's Tower for a second, because maybe you can clarify. Uh, I, I've heard, I've, I actually know a couple teams that have been up there, and they described um, they went went there after dark. Uh-huh. And I don't, I don't encourage anyone to go ever go to. Devil's Tower, period, because it's private property now. And they're, at, you're, at, they're actually arresting people for going up there now. But especially after dark. That's just ridiculous. Now, getting on the security side of things, you know, Adam Voff Division, which is a terrorist organization, has been known to come up here and actually took a video of them with automatic weapons, also at Devil's Tower. But Ooh. the team I know that went up there described hearing grunts and growls. No, it wasn't coyotes, it wasn't wolves. <laughs> um, they described a very large black dog-looking creature 
that actually follow them. In, in, so if, you, if you've been up there, you walk along the road that goes up to the actual Devil's Tower. There's like a ravine or a, a, a drop-off next to the road. And they could hear something down below that was following them. They also described a Bigfoot-style creature, or Bigfoot-looking creature, uh, that was up in that area. And that's also another Bigfoot hotspot. So, you know... Yeah, I, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, the tower going up there, um, there's right by the dam where they do the fishing and stuff, um, There's a it's an incline uh, walkway. It's um, like a, like what you would see a hostel room or something, and it's um, cement. It's got windows on the side and stuff, and you walk it up it, and it's it's quite a long um, passageway, and then you get to the tower itself. And to visualize the tower for people who haven't been in there, you, you if you can picture like a I think it's three stories. Um, I'm pretty sure it's three stories tall. But it's um, completely gutted, and so you're walking on beams and things like that, and there's a big, like, cement mixer right in the middle of it. And it is so dangerous and scary up there, it is, it's not even funny. Um, it, that thing in the middle, it just, um, I'm not sure, it, it must have been the crusher itself, I'm guessing, but um, it, the way it sits, it's sitting on um, the, a rock ledge, and it's the rock ledge that um, faces Lake Shannon. And so it's this big tower with this cement mixer thing in the middle of it on the edge of a big rocky cliff that goes into the lake. Yeah, I, I, you know, I was looking at pictures over today, actually, when I was uh, getting ready for the show. I had like an hour between training and getting ready for the show, so I didn't have a whole lot of time. Um. And yeah, it just you know, just looking at it, it looks dangerous to even go walking around. Uh, let alone yeah. worrying about let alone working worrying about paranormal things. Uh, just the safety factor of going up there is, is bad enough. Um, Kayla is in the chat asking the so people say the theater in concrete is haunted. Is this true? Uh, so let's talk about concrete. So concrete itself was built on a crystal quarry, mm-hmm. and just the fact that it was built on a crystal quarry, let alone the fact that the town burned down, and I believe uh, was the 1920s that mm-hmm. it burned down. You yeah. know, you've got a, you've got a lot of devastation. You've got a lot of uh, crisis type type things where people actually died, and those spirits are stuck. Uh, some of them want to be passed over, and and we help them. Uh, other ones don't want to be passed over, and they're not a problem, so we're not going to mess with them. Uh, you know, there, there's a 20-year-old in the hub that died in the 1900s that's having the time of his life. Why are you going to mess with him? If I was 20, I wouldn't want to pass over either if I was in a bar. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yes, the theater in concrete is haunted. It does have spirits in it. But what's unique and interesting about the town of concrete, because if you've ever been to concrete, it's all one long town. All the buildings are connected. And what you'll find, and, you know, you know I know Russ and S.J. Wells, uh, the American ghost hunters, have actually investigated extensively, because they're up here, uh, the town of Concrete. And they would go in one building or one store, and they would find a spirit. And that same spirit would be down in, I believe it was the hardware store. <laughs> and they'd That's find the, the same. Yeah. And they actually found he the drowned. same spirit. Say again? That, that's the little boy that drowned that's in the hardware store. And okay. it's the little, girl that, the little girl that's in the hotel. And then um, I think it's, um, there's, a, there's a grown man in the hotel um, that, ha- that makes angry, loud steps. And the theater is also very haunted. But what you find is the same spirits, not all of them, but there's a couple of different spirits that actually travel, kind of like there's a, a, a hallway or a, you know, a passageway that goes be through the entire town. And mm-hmm. I, I think the little boy also goes upstairs in the bank. I think that's where they found him as well, well as the hardware store. 